so let's get the first few pieces of criticism away out of this episode. Uh, the first half of the episode is basically just the characters looking for two other characters that are very obviously not dead. And it kind of just like wastes time meandering around just looking for them and that's kind of it. Uh, but in between that, we get to see some interactions with, like, Kyoho and some members of the village at their end, and they're kind of asking him to stay in. And uh, it kind of, like, builds up the idea and more so of the fact that this village is filled with good people who are willing to accept those, even if they're from a bloodline that was once seen as bad, like Kagura, or even someone like Kyoho, who's kind of not fully there mentally you know and to say uh in the most sensitive way possible kyo is not really the, you know the smartest uh smartest in the bunch but you know he's got a good heart and he recognizes what's good and what's bad obviously because he didn't continue to side with the rest of the members of the seven swordsmen who escaped from the prison with buntan and heavy ichigo uh which I talked about last week, how I didn't really like how Heavy Ichigo died, because it just didn't really make much sense to kill her off because of the reasons of why I explained why Kagura's death was also really stupid. But I think what I found really enjoyable about the episode, and what kind of saves the rest of the episode, is the, the later second half. And it pretty much tells a better revenge is bad story, and uh, the, the cycle of revenge is bad story better than... The Last of Us Part 2! <laughs> so, we, you know, it's been building up this whole idea that Boruto and everyone else really wants to get revenge and, you know, avenge Kagura because Funamushi had killed Kagura. That's what they had all really wanted to do. Boruto didn't want to forgive Funamushi for what he did. He didn't want to understand why they were doing any of this. He just wanted to avenge his fallen comrade who died in battle and sacrificed his life to protect everyone else in the village. And then later in the episode, uh, uh, Iwabe and Dinky explain that they think and they can come up with a theory that the reason why they didn't kill either of them when they were captured uh, a few episodes back is because of the fact that they were looking for food for the children. And that was just the theory that they came up with. Later in the episode, Boruto runs off because he doesn't want to believe that because he still isn't you know, fully into the idea of forgiving the Funato or forgiving Funamushi for all the lives that they've taken in this you know, senseless war. And then later in the episode, uh, Funamushi's son ends up showing up and he's like, oh, I'm not going to forgive you and I'm going to kill you for killing my dad. And that's when Boruto realizes that there's probably more to this war than just what the initial reason as to why they were doing this was they're probably you know a village full of people who are trying to just survive and by overthrowing the mist village they feel like that's the reason or that's the thing that they need to do in order to be able to survive and you know just make things better for themselves so they so Borzo tries to understand that there's this cycle of hatred that's been created and he wants to put that to an end, and by by doing that, he wants to stop fighting with the Funaso and have the war stop without having anyone else having to die. And the reason why I say this is a better Revenge is Bad story than The Last of Us Part 2 is because at the end of The Last of Us Part 2, um, Ellie doesn't want to give up on her cycle of revenge. She doesn't want to for, uh, forget about what Abby did to Joel, her father figure, and she wants to go and kill Abby. She goes and sees Abby in, like, her worst state possible. Abby's, like, almost basically fucking dead, and uh, Ellie frees her, and then she tries to forgive her again, but she's like, no, I really want to kill her. And in the middle of her trying to kill Abby, she's like, oh, let me have this fucking flashback of Joel when he was alive in this one sequence that I had with him before he died. And then let me forgive Abby when it's like, why did you wait until the last fucking moment in order to finally decide that you were going to forgive this person? You should have forgave this person when you realized that they were trying their hardest to save the one person that they care about the most. And when they were at their lowest, but still trying their hardest to survive and escape from the situation that they were, that you found them in. Instead, you waited until the last fucking second when they were almost dead because you were drowning them with your very own hands. 
Boruto instead sees the cycle of revenge and he wants to put this to a stop. Because, uh, like, the Funato and Funamushi had already killed two of theirs, and they got revenge back by killing Funamushi. Borto wants to go ahead and put this to a stop because senseless death just isn't worth it. Just just to get revenge for for what someone did, it's just not worth going through all this effort. Just, you know, killing all of these people just for something that's so minuscule just isn't worth doing. Borto wants to go ahead and already put this to an end, and it's someone else who needs to be able to figure out that the cycle of revenge is only going to continue on further if this continues on the way that it is, right? If, you know, Funimushi's son, uh, I forgot his name, uh, ends up killing Borto, all of his friends are just going to want to go and get revenge on the fucking kid and the rest of the, the Funato clan, and all of them still really want to go kill uh, and avenge Kagura and stop the Funato, um, and a couple of them want to side with Borto. They actually kind of agree with Borto that maybe they, they should go ahead and put a stop to this fight, put a stop to this war without having to kill each other. It was just kind of interesting, and then at the very end of the episode, Borto finally figures out that Ikada, uh, who we haven't seen in a very long time, uh, is a member of the Funato clan, and that he's literally direct family to the head and members of the Funato. So... Yeah, you know, obviously that's a lot of things are going to come from that, but I don't know. I just thought that this was at least like a little bit more interesting than what we had been getting for the past couple of weeks, and I just thought it was really funny that this was a better, a better like cycle of revenge slash revenge is bad story, better told than the last was part two, which I thought was really bad. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't have much else to say. The episode was had more. The episode had more of my interest than I thought it was going to. But who's to say it's going to be able to keep that going for much longer? Because we've been going at this arc for way too fucking long. And it feels like it should already be over. But we're stuck here. So let's just hope that it kind of just ends sooner or later. That's it. That's the video. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh... I don't really, I don't really know what else to say about the episode. It, was, it just had more of my interest than a regular episode did, and I thought it was at least a little bit more interesting. But that was about it. Not a whole lot more. Anyway, like the video, subscribe. I'll see you guys next one. I'm out. Peace. Let the